Hi gorgeous and a very happy frugal Friday to you. If you are new to the channel, welcome. I make videos like this every Friday focusing on drugstore products and conducting wear tests just like the one I'm showing you today. So please subscribe and you'll always be notified of new videos like this in the future. Today we are focusing on face primers. This has been a very highly requested video by so many of you. You've wanted to see me do a battle of face primers, so here it is. I do wanna say up front, I have a very oily complexion for those who do not know me, so it's really hard to find a primer that works high-end wise, but especially when we're talking about drugstore products. So this was quite a struggle, I'm gonna tell you right now. But what I do wanna say as a disclaimer is what works for me may not work for you and what works for you may not work for me. So please keep in mind that these are my opinions and experiences with each of these primers. One more thing I want to mention before we get too far into the video, it's very important to pay attention to the primer foundation compatibility. And what I mean is, if you're using a silicone-based primer, you want to pair it up with a silicone-based foundation. And if you're using a water-based primer, you want to pair it up with a water-based foundation. Why? because the two just play together better. They like to be in their own family. If you combined a silicone-based primer with a water-based foundation, you may not get the best possible longest lasting results and end up hating that silicone primer when you might've actually liked it if you would have paired it up with a silicone-based foundation. And that has happened to me in the past, which is why I wanted to share this with you right now. Now, how can you tell if you're using a silicone-based primer or a water-based primer? Look to the ingredient list. If you see any words ending in cone in the first few ingredients, then you're dealing with a silicone-based primer. But if you do not see any of those words anywhere in the ingredient list, then you're more than likely dealing with a water-based primer. And throughout the video, I will notate somewhere on the screen here what the primer is that I'm talking about, whether it's silicone-based or water-based, and I'll also notate which foundation I tested it with. We're gonna start off with the Hard Candy Primer. This is their Sheer Envy Primer, and they claim that it's shine-free, and it's going to control your shine for a matte finish all day long. They didn't make any promises in terms of time, so we'll give them a pass for that. This has a rather thick consistency, a little bit of this goes a long way. You really can't slather this on your face anyway. But after wearing it for eight hours, it was much more shiny than I would like for it to be, which was disappointing. And I had expected this one to last a little longer simply because the setting spray from Hard Candy is one of my all time go-to favorites for making my face matte throughout the day. So I thought the primer would be good too, but nope. Moving on to Milani's Prime Shield. This claims to be mattifying and pore minimizing, and it is oil-free. This has a very lightweight formula, but it is thick, just like the hard candy one, so you really don't need much of this one on application. It sinks in, dries very fast. At the end of the day, it's not disco ball shiny. I am not sending out signals to the moon, let's just say that right there, but it's still glowing. I wasn't too impressed with my nose area. It looked like it got rubbed off somehow, but you know what, that could have been me, so we're gonna give it a pass there. All in all, I will say that I was pretty happy with this one, and I would more than likely use it again. Next up is Maybelline's Master Prime. This one claims to blur and smooth the complexion. Mm. I did find it to be very lightweight. It felt like moisturizer when I applied it, and it dried very quickly. I didn't really feel like it blurred my complexion or smoothed out lines, anything like that. I didn't see that personally. And after wearing this one for eight hours, I felt like it was way, way shiny. And I would not trust this one in the future, quite honestly. Wet n Wild's Photo Focus Face Primer. This one has a medium consistency. It's not too heavy. Again, a little bit of this goes a real long way. It claims to refine pores and fill in fine lines like the Maybelline Master Prime. Again, I didn't really see a difference with this primer. Maybe it's just me. Maybe you'll see something different on camera, but I just really didn't see that big of a difference. And after wearing it for eight hours, it was really, really shiny, much too shiny for my liking. So big thumbs down from me on this one. Next up, I have NYX's Shine Killer. This is one that I had really high hopes for because NYX is one of those lines that 
doesn't disappoint me that often. This primer had a very light consistency. It dried almost instantly on application. It made the skin feel very smooth. The interesting thing about this primer I wanted to share with you is NYX tells you on the back of the package that it can be worn over, under, or without makeup. So I wanted to test that on a separate day and I applied it over my foundation. Don't try that. That was horrible. <laughs> it just made everything cake up and look terrible. So I don't know what they're talking about there. Anyway, after wearing this one for eight hours, sadly, it didn't kill any of my shine. It actually brought it to life. It was not a good look for me. Mm -mm. CoverGirl also has a primer in their True Blend line. And what I liked about this one is that it said it was meant for oily skin. Yes. So you know, I couldn't wait to try this one. It has an excellent consistency dries fast on application and made the skin look great underneath foundation. And I can't tell you how happy I am that this one looked great after eight hours. It kept everything in place. No complaints from me. This is one that I will be using in the future and I do recommend checking it out if you have a very oily complexion like moi. I also picked up a mattifying face primer from the brand Koki. This is the one that you can find in Walmart stores. It has a consistency very similar to that of the Benefit Professional, if you've ever used that one. And I did feel like it helped to disguise my pores a little bit. It dries extremely fast and gives you a very smooth application. It had a pretty good wear time. It wasn't awful, like some other ones have been that I've shown you so far, but it was still a little shinier than I would like. But honestly, I would probably use this one again in the future because it didn't make me look like a big grease ball. And that's saying a lot because I think every product I reviewed so far from the Koki line, I have given a thumbs down to. So to see something good that I like come out of their line, well, that's a plus. Models Own Face Base. And you can find Models Own in Ulta stores. I don't know if they're in store. I had to order this one off of their website. Just wanna say that up front. This one claims to smooth, correct, and prime. I did feel like it smoothed. I didn't feel like it corrected so much. And my skin was still red after application, but I could feel the smoothness on my skin immediately afterwards. This one had a horrible wear time. Ugh, it's so funny because when I test products for videos like this, I usually put one on one half of my face and the other one on the other half of my face. So this day I was testing the two different primers and I looked at my face after about three hours and one side, just the model's own side is just shining. And this side is still matte. It was really odd looking, let me tell you. And by the nine hour mark, oh, I looked like a complete grease ball. I mean, you'd had to hose me down. It looked terrible. I also tested out ELF's Poreless Face Primer. Now this one does claim to reduce the appearance of pores and I did feel like it did that. It was a beautiful finish on the skin afterwards. And this one lasted a really nice time on my skin. I went for about nine hours with this one and did not look shiny, still looked matte. Highly impressed with this one and I do think it's the cheapest one out of all the primers I'm sharing with you today. I could be wrong, but I think it is. And whoa, Nelly, I love it. Last but not least is the Prime and Fine Primer from Catrice Cosmetics. And you can find this brand in Ulta stores. This one has a lot of claims to it too, kind of like the Maybelline Master Prime. It says that it reduces the size of pores. I personally didn't feel like it did that. I didn't notice a difference there. And it also gives you a silky matte finish that is long lasting. I did like the consistency. It dried very quickly, didn't have any issues there. And after wearing this one for nine hours, they are accurate in their claims. It is very long wearing, kept the face matte, is definitely one of those that I would use again, and I was very pleased with this one. Out of all the primers I reviewed for you today, the top three worst that I would say avoid, 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 are the ones from Maybelline, Models Own, and Hard Candy. Very disappointed by all three of these brands. Ugh. But my top three favorites that I highly recommend you checking out, I cannot recommend them to you enough, are the ones from e.l.f., Catrice Cosmetics, and CoverGirl. <laughs> I hope you found this helpful today. Let me know what your favorite drugstore face primer is and what you think about any of the primers that I shared with you in today's video. Please subscribe for more like this in the future. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I wish you a wonderful weekend ahead.